Lightning is usually not considered to be a threat to aircraft. In fact, airplanes are built with the assumption that they will be struck by lightning at least once over their lifetime. Statistically, given the number of planes that there are, lightning strikes involving aircraft are basically a daily occurrence somewhere in the world. Lightning to modern aircraft is so inconsequential that even in a case of a major incident which involved a lightning strike on a passenger plane in 2014, it had less to do with the actual lightning and more to do with how it affected those inside the plane, or more specifically, the pilots. The incident of Logan Air Flight 6780 is more about the human and psychological factors as it is about the environmental ones. And what is striking is that the plane did not crash, and the reason as to why is really something. The Scottish airline Logan Air is a lifeline for those who live on the Shetland Islands archipelago, located northeast of the Scottish mainland. Over 20,000 people call Shetland their home. The most convenient way to travel on and off of the islands is to travel by air through Sumbra Airport, which itself is located on the very southern tip of the island cluster. There are usually just a handful of flights per day in and out of Sumbra Airport, usually to the larger cities across Scotland. Loganair is the airline which operates these flights to the Shetlands. For a time in the 2010s, Loganair had a franchise agreement with another airline called Flybe. Flybe essentially sold tickets for Loganair and even painted their planes in the livery of Flybe. It was not the first time Loganair had done this, as they had terminated their similar contract with British Airways in 2008. Loganair in 2014 operated various different turboprop planes. The airline operated the two planes built by the Swedish engineering company Saab, the Saab 340 and Saab 2000. The former being a plane that the operator still flies and owns over a dozen of. The latter, the Saab 2000, was a much less successful plane for Saab. Compared to the 340 which had sold over 450 units, only 63 Saab 2000s were ever built. Though Loganair retired their Saab 2000s in 2020, it is the plane of discussion today. The Saab 2000 is a high-performance commuter plane. Despite its similar exterior design to its shorter sister plane, it is completely different on the inside. The avionics and systems differ, and so as Loganair operated both Saabs, pilots would require separate training on each plane. One key difference which will be important to bear in mind for later is that the Saab 2000 in 2014 was just about the only plane with an autopilot which would not disconnect following pilot inputs on the control wheel or manipulation of the trim functions. On most passenger planes, say the Airbus A320 for example, the autopilot can be overridden if enough force is put on the controls, allowing the pilot to take over manual control without having to reach for the autopilot master switch. On December 15, 2014, one of Loganair's Saab 2000s was expected to make a trip to the Shetland Islands in the evening departing from Aberdeen. The plane and pilots had already made a trip to Sumbra and back earlier that day, and that trip was uneventful. There were 30 passengers on board, one flight attendant and two pilots for a total of 33 occupants. I wish I could share more information about the pilots, However, information such as names have been withheld from reliable sources. What we can share is that the captain was 41 years old and identified as a man, the co-pilot a woman aged 35. On the Saab 2000, the captain had obtained just 143 hours in the aircraft. The co-pilot was also new to the plane, having 260 hours logged. Both pilots had significantly more flying experience with other aircraft with a combined total flying time of over 7,000 hours between them. The captain had significant flying experience flying the Saab 340, having spent most of his time with Loganair which he joined in 2005 flying such plane, first flying it as a first officer before being promoted to captain. He knew the Saab 340 extremely well, but was new to the Saab 2000. The co-pilot also spent a significant portion of her flying career piloting a completely different plane, 
In her case, it was the Fairchild Metroliner. Flying as Flight 6780, this Logan Air Saab 2000 left Aberdeen on December 15, 2014 for the evening rotation to Sumbera. As the crew would be flying back on the same plane following a short turnaround in Sumbera, the flight was loaded with the appropriate fuel to fly there and back. Weather en route was terrible. Turbulence and building thunderstorms had made the flight a bumpy one for its passengers. As Flight 6780 approached Sumbera, air traffic control there informed the pilots that a lightning strike at the airport had temporarily disabled the Automated Terminal Information Service or ATIS. ATIS is a constant broadcast of local meteorological information on a specific radio frequency. It is updated every half hour. Despite the controller's information about the ATIS being down, the pilots were still able to tune into it and receive some weather and airport information. On that evening, runway 27, the west-facing runway at the airport, was in use. As Sumbara Airport is located on the southern tip of the archipelago, the airport, including runway 27, is nearly surrounded by the North Sea. Flight 6780 was directed out east of the airport several miles and was expected to turn and line up with the runway and land safely on runway 27. With stormy conditions in the area, the pilots chose to wait until the storm passes before landing. The plane circled away from the airport until that time. The pilots were also given an instruction to descend down to 2,000 feet. The plane descended further. During this approach phase, the autopilot was in control of the plane. The pilots then changed heading in their circling efforts. As the plane rolled back to a neutral position from this maneuver, in an instant, the Saab 2000 was struck by lightning. Multiple passengers in the cabin would later note to investigators that they observed a very rare phenomenon known as ball lightning. Ball lightning is not very well understood and observations of it are very rare. It is often described as effectively an orb of lightning. Passengers noticed it inside of the plane moving at the front of the cabin. Logan Air Flight 6780, as of December 2021, is still one of the most recent confirmed sightings of this phenomenon. This occurred immediately before the lightning strike. The lightning strike itself struck the plane on the tip of its nose, exiting the aircraft through the APU, having traveled the full length of the plane. Following the strike, the captain put his hands on the control wheel in an effort to take manual control of the aircraft. The co-pilot radioed a mayday message to the ground. The captain quickly noticed that he had difficulty handling the plane. He wanted to climb and so instinctively pulled back on the control wheel, only to find that the response was sluggish. The pilots had thought that the lightning strike had disabled the autopilot, so they expected that the plane should respond as usual to their inputs as if they were flying manually. On the primary flight display, a green AP icon lets the pilots know that the autopilot was still engaged. Contrasted to how this looks when the autopilot is off, which on the Saab 2000 is indicated by this AP icon colored white instead of a bright green. It can be assumed that this would have been difficult to see and notice. What should have been noticed was the audible warnings the plane was giving to the pilots that was supposed to indicate that the autopilot was still connected. The pilots would later recall to investigators that they don't remember hearing it. Also indicated on the primary flight display was an icon which read PR. On the Saab 2000, this indicates pitch and roll mistrim. As the captain pulled on the control wheel in an effort to climb, the autopilot was countering this wanting the plane to go down as it had been programmed to descend down to an altitude of 2000 feet. The pilots also attempted to control the pitch with the help of the pitch trim function on the control wheel. As we have already discussed, this too does not disengage the autopilot. Though the plane had been struck by lightning, it would turn out that damage was negligible and the plane still functioned as it was supposed to. The lightning strike was merely an environmental factor which contributed to a high stress situation for the pilots. Though pitching movements were sluggish to respond, Flight 6780 did reach a new altitude of around 4,000 feet. Moments later, while the plane was east of Sumbra Airport, still several miles out from the safety of a runway, the plane's nose began pitching down uncommanded, and Flight 6780 entered a rapid descent. 
The vertical speed would reach negative 9,500 feet per minute, indicating an uncontrollable nosedive scenario. To quote the accident report, Shortly after reaching 4,000 feet above sea level, the control column was fully aft while the pitch trim was almost fully nose down. The airspeed also increased, and the pitch trim authority became greater than the authority from the fully aft control column, causing the aircraft to pitch down and enter a steep descent which could not be arrested. As the plane had been preparing for landing, there was not a lot of space between them and the North Sea. The plane passed below the programmed altitude of 2,000 feet, still in a nose-down rapid descent. As altitude began to approach 1,000 feet, the co-pilot suggested increasing the engine power, which was applied immediately after. The autopilot would eventually disconnect, but not because the pilots disconnected it manually. Instead, the reason the autopilot would disconnect was because of erroneous data in the plane's logic, effectively creating a glitch which led to it disconnecting. This coincided with the pilots applying maximum thrust on the throttle control. It is believed this is the only reason the plane did not crash into the North Sea, which easily could have been a fatal disaster. It was pretty much a stroke of luck that the autopilot disconnected. The pilots still up till this point were unaware it was still attempting to control the plane. With the plane under manual control following this glitch, the captain was able to easily pull the plane out of its dive and the plane would appear to the pilots to be behaving normally again. The pilots abandoned their approach into Sumbra and headed back to Aberdeen where it made a safe landing. Logan Air Flight 6780 narrowly avoided disaster. It was estimated that the plane was around 7 seconds from colliding with the water if the autopilot had not disconnected. Investigators interviewed both pilots on multiple occasions to try and uncover what happened on the flight. The pilots assumed that the autopilot disconnected following the lightning strike. The captain had done lightning strike training on the Saab 340, the plane he had spent the majority of his tenure at Logan Air flying. But as stated, the Saab 340 is a completely different plane in the area of systems, performance, and especially when talking about this case, autopilot. Because lightning strikes can affect the electronics of a plane, the captain made an assumption that the autopilot must have disconnected as he had trained for that sort of scenario when training for the Saab 340. The investigation made recommendations to the European Aviation Authorities about reassessing the design of the Saab 2000's autopilot, emphasizing that modifications should be made so that the autopilot does not become a hazard when a pilot wishes to override. A similar notice was also directed at the American Federal Aviation Administration indicating that they too should review aircraft for the same reasons. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching. This video happens to go out on Christmas Day so if you're watching then, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays. Otherwise I must say that this is the last video of the year. 2021 has been one amazing year for me and this channel. We have not missed a single weekend this year for uploads and we hope to continue the videos well into 2022. With that said, I would like to thank my patrons one final time this year. If you would like to get your name featured or read out at the end of the next video and get early access to all new videos 48 hours before they go out on YouTube, then consider joining the Disaster Breakdown Patreon from £3 per month and the link to that will be in the pinned comment below. A thank you to the five pound tier patrons, Avery Tioda, Balavan, Chilhelm, Entercale, Hunter Heilman, Hector Palmatellas, Jennifer Forketic, Joey, John Ambrosia, Ken Zachman, Kenneth Morins, Len, Leon St. Jennings, Marie Ennis, MG, Michelle, Mom Left Me at Best Buy, MX Koifish, Pac-Man 7, Panic Chicken, Pedro Cruz, Pipsqueak, Rebecca Rivers, Rez, Rio Wheatley, Surya Melody, Sleepy, Su 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 Shoes, Tristar Triforce, and Tristan Kriegsman. And a big thanks to the generous £10 tier patrons for their truly incredible support. Ada Montgomery, Ansid, Bodgos Daisu, Derek Bean, Epsilon, Aaron Wilson, Extreme Brooklyn Accent, Karma, Lily K. May, 
Magus Seal, Megan Garrick, Mike Milton, Roger Mayer, So FP, Steve Cottrell, The Coconut, Vapranva, and Where Are My Cheetos? Thank you all so much. And that is it from me this year. Thank you all so much for watching in 2021, and I will see you in 2022. Have a great new year, and goodbye.